<laughs> the Bible says that we live in the natural first and then the spiritual. So why I would never put nothing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hello to everybody. Happy New Year's. It's Pastor Brian Phillips. We are Troop Ministries of Charlotte, North Carolina. Come on, let's give God some praise. Yeah. If you are watching at home or if you're sitting out here, just know God has been so good that he has blessed us to see another year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because we all know it's been a trying year. It's been real. But before I go any further, let me acknowledge God first with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you the glory today. Thank you for this day that you have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, thank you for your blood and for the suffering that you took on that cross that I may be able to stand here today as your servant to preach your word in these last and evil days. Father, as I decrease, I ask that you would increase, that your words would touch the hearts, the spirits, and souls of those that hear it. Someone may be saved, delivered, set free, or accept your son Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior into their lives. This is the prayer I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Trying year. 2020. 2021 was trying. And as we go into 2022, we still see that we are battling with this plague. Now, many people have referred to this as, oh, you know, it's like they call it a pandemic. I call it what it is because one thing about God's word is that it is the same today, yesterday, and forever. It does not change. So whenever you live in a wicked, whenever the world was wicked and they disregarded the commandments of what God said, he always brought upon the earth plagues. He brought pestilence. He brought disease. He brought famine. And God's word don't change. So today we see disease has come upon the earth. And the evidence of it now is coming into fruition more than ever before. So let me break this down to you. Recently, the CDC has told us that now we don't got to quarantine for 10 days. We can only quarantine for five. They told you, get that vaccination, two shots. Now you need two boosters. Now they got pills. They got all of this stuff. And everybody that's taking all of it, they still getting sick. Athletes make $30 million a year. They can't even play ball. Why? Because they vaccinated and now they still testing positive. Because the problem is the world is too busy following after the CDC. The world is too busy following after all of these rules and all of these things that are being implemented into the world to say, if you do this, you're going to be good. But let me tell you something. I don't care how many shots you get. I don't care how many pills you take. I don't care how many masks you put on. Nothing can hide you from the wrath of God. Now, this past year, I have to say that I battled with the coronavirus. I tested positive uh, almost a year ago, I think in February, and, and I had to quarantine, and, you know, I followed the rules. I, and, and this is the thing. I have 11 people in my home, three adults and eight children. And when I tested positive, I ain't had no money to go to nobody's hotel or nothing like that and quarantine for 10 days. So I locked myself in my room. And I want you to know that because of the mercy and grace of God, because nobody in my house is vaccinated, that I locked myself in my room and I wore a mask when I came out, when I did come out. And to this day, I can say that not one of my children, my wife, my mother who has underlined complications in her health right now, nobody in my house has ever tested positive for the coronavirus. And it is only by the grace of God. Amen. It wasn't because I followed the CDC. It wasn't because we ran and got vaccinations. See, the problem with the world today is that everybody wants to do everything else except what God say do. 
We want to find an alternate route in everything in this world instead of just doing what God says do. So we follow the CDC. We follow the president. We follow the Congress, the House, and everything that they say do, we follow it hoping for a better day. See, we don't follow after Christ. Here's the thing. We've been told that we don't have to honor God's word. Jesus has been pulled out of everything in the world. In this world today, we glorify everything but what is righteous. So today, you can do everything that's wicked, and the world will tell you, go for it. You want to get married, fellas? Go get married. Women, you want to marry another woman? Go get married. And not only are we going to okay it, but we're going to legalize it for you. You like smoking weed? When I was growing up, they put us in jail for it. Now they found a way to tax it. Now everybody get buzzed. You know how much money the government made off of taxing marijuana this year? Billions of dollars. You know how many souls are still being led astray because they are smoking and doing everything that does not honor God? Millions of souls. This is the deception of the enemy. So today I come with a message. That message is follow after righteousness. Stop following after the CDC. Stop following after all of the, these laws because I want you to know that to tell, for me to tell you not to follow after the law is not to say to be ignorant to the laws of the land. But if you follow after Christ, you automatically fall into that place where you are obedient to the law because nothing in the word of God teaches us to be ignorant to the world. Through Christ. The Bible tells us, follow after righteousness. And believe this today as I give you this statement. Follow after righteousness because if it ain't righteous, it ain't right. Don't let them fool you. Nothing in the ABC store is right. No cigarette you smoke is right. That woman that ain't your wife that you sleep with every night, it ain't right. And it's nowhere in the Bible where it's justified. There is no such thing as common law. I don't care how long you've been shacking up with a female or shacking up with a man. If you ain't married, it is not right. Get you a wife. Yeah. Repent of your sins. Yeah. And God will forgive you of your sins. Yeah. And he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. On, now this type of preaching ain't famous. But it's the truth. It's the truth. Preach. Hallelujah. And if ye shall know the truth, it's the truth that will make you free. Yeah. Yeah. It will make you free. Yeah. It's the truth that makes us free. Not the way of the world, not the laws of the land, but the truth of the gospel is what makes you free. Follow after righteousness. I promise you, if it ain't righteous, it ain't right. Don't let them fool you. Oh, no. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. It's the deception of the enemy to make you think that everything that is wrong is right. He wants you to make you, every time you lay down with that sister and she give you that feeling that no other woman ain't never gave you, that is the deception of the enemy to make you keep laying with her. There's nothing right about it. It's all sin. All of it leads to eternal death. If it ain't righteous, it ain't right. Hallelujah. Proverbs 21 and 21 says, he that follow after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. I am a living testimony today of how when I turned my life to Christ and I started to follow after the way of the Lord and not the way of the world that I see how God moved in my life. I have only one one thing in my life today as I stand here before you as a preacher of the gospel I have one thing on my heart that I want. The only thing that I want 
for me, thanking God that he uses me to spread the gospel, is that people can see in one day experience just how good my Jesus really is. Boy, y'all missing it. That's my hunger. That's my thirst. I want people to experience just how good Jesus is. So while they longing for everything else in the world, the Bible says, blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness. It says they shall be filled. I'm here today because I want people to hunger and thirst for Jesus the way I had to, to get to where I am today so that you can experience the glory, the peace, the love, the comfort that you have in Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I want it for y'all. If you don't know Jesus, I want that for you. You missing it. You missing it. Hallelujah. The apostle Peter said in 1 Peter 2 and 21, he says, for even here unto where you call. He says, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. That if we would follow after the example of Jesus, first and foremost, if we did that, you would see how God would heal the land of all of the plague because now we are obedient to his word. I don't care how many, you know what vaccinations are? That's deception. That's a plot for billionaires to become trillionaires. Who you think getting rich? The pharmaceutical companies. Who dying? Y'all. Be not deceived. The world is based on money. The rich get richer while the poor get poorer. And people are dying and losing their souls every day. Every day. Souls are being... It is... Call, and I want y'all to really receive this right now. There's a word called genocide. We've seen that happen with the Jews. We've seen it happen with African Americans during the time of slavery. But what we don't talk about is spiritual genocide. How many people are dying that don't know Jesus? That souls are being lost and going to hell. That's spiritual genocide. They don't teach it. They don't preach it. They tell you, just have faith or just believe. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what the gospel says. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 15, starting at the 15th verse. I mean, at the 5th verse. And I want to read these verses of scripture to you. And I pray that the word of God would resonate. Because it's time. It's time for a change. You want to change in this world? You tired of wearing masks? Repent. Turn your hearts unto the Lord. Accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior into your lives. Because nothing can save you from the wrath of God. The wickedness in this world where we have disregarded and we have just said, you know what? We don't care less. We could care less about the gospel, about what Jesus say, about living holy. We're going to party. We lit. We're going to live good. Guess what? I'm lit too. I'm living in truth. Pastor Phillips is lit lit. Living in truth. The truth is Jesus. But you know how many people are lit lit going to hell? burning for eternity. You want lit lit? Oh, you're going to be lit. You're going to be lit unless you repent and turn from your wickedness. Oh, you're going to see what lit lit really is. I ain't got no time to watch people die and go to hell when the answer is right here. All you got to do is repent. The Bible says if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and that he can cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. John 15, starting at the fifth verse. I am the vine. Hallelujah. This is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the vine. 
He says, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Without Christ, we can do nothing. There is no true fruit that is brought onto this earth unless it is through Jesus Christ. Be not deceived. Now these preachers are telling you, come on in, worship and praise, tell Jesus you love him, and ain't nobody got to live holy. Nobody ain't got to live right. Nobody don't got to keep God's commandments. Nobody. We have been brought to think now through some of these doctrines that the confession to say that you believe is enough. Bible says that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. Verse 6, if a man abideth not in me, listen to Christ. He says he is cast forth as a branch and it withereth. It says, and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Hallelujah. A branch that beareth no fruit is good for nothing but fire. We, they gather those up and they toss them into a pile and they light them up. That's all it's good for. That analogy is so powerful where we understand that we as the branches and Jesus Christ as the vine, that if those branches bring not fruit, what is it? We are cast into the fire. One thing about Christ, he wasn't super complicated. He made his word easy enough to where a child could receive it. And there were many analogies that Jesus would use, this being one of them. He referred to himself as divine. But he also referred to his people as the branches. Requiring that in him, in Christ Jesus, you bear fruit. Without Christ, you bear no fruit. This is what the world needs to hear today, yeah. that in Christ, yeah. there's healing. In Christ, yeah. there is protection. In Christ, yeah. there is peace. Uh -huh. Why is there so much wickedness in the world? Why is there so much death in the world? Because we have taken Jesus out from the world, and we tossed him to the side. Yeah. Follow after righteousness. Because if it's not righteous, it ain't right. It ain't right. It ain't right. And it ain't no other way. For he's the truth, the way, and the life. There is no other way. No man can come to the Father except they come through Christ. I had to learn it as a Muslim. I was taught pray. Pray five times a day. Turn towards Mecca. Quote certain surahs and ayats out of the Holy Quran. And that's my personal route to Christ. I can go to Christ through prayer. That is the deception. Which is why I stood on that masala praying unto Allah, which is nothing but an Arabic word for God. People love to keep saying, oh, Allah, they worship another. No, no, they don't. One God. Just one. Many names. Hallelujah. God has many names. Allah is another one of them. <laughs> Be not deceived. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and you know, in my hunger, like I said, I have a hunger and thirst. That thirst is for others to experience Christ the way I did. Because I know what God brought me from. I know who I once was. I know how I lived. I loved what I, I know what I loved, what, what, I am, what I was into, the things that I did. I know how good God is, how powerful Christ is. Because when Jesus Christ came into my life, everything started shaking. Everything started changing. I lost everything that I obtained with drug money. I had to give it back. To this day, I had to realize that with Christ, I have found out that I never had nothing at all. How you consider a rental property you paying $1,500 a month for? You paying somebody else's mortgage. That ain't your house. Today, I'm a homeowner. Don't be deceived. I got a felonies in three different states, but my name is on numerous, numerous 501s. Be not deceived. God is able. God is able. Don't be deceived. In Christ, you can have it all. Whatever God sees set forth for you to have, you can have it. But in Christ, you learn to have a godly contentment. So you learn to be content with what he give you. 
So guess what? You don't need a Bentley. You'll take that Toyota. My car leaking every fluid that's in a car. Every fluid in the car, my car leaking it. It's leaking antifreeze. It's leaking transmission fluid. It's leaking oil. To God be the glory for it. It's still cranked. If I got to get the A to B, I might have to go hit O'Reilly's and get some fluids. But I can get from A to B. You know what? Because those days of dreaming of that foreign was the deception of the enemy. But in Christ, there's a godly contentment. I got 12 kids. I got 11 kids and one on the way. Any minute. Any minute. Thank you, Jesus. And I don't even have enough space to transport all these chaps. But I got somebody named Jesus. I know he going to make a way for me because he ain't never failed me. He ain't never let me down. And so if I got to go put some oil in that car to make sure all my kids get from A to B, guess what? It's going to drip all the way from A to B. But to God be the glory when I get there. Paul wrote to Corinth, and he told him in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in the first verse of that letter that he wrote to them, he told them, he says, to be ye followers of me. He says, even all as I also am of Christ. And today, this is when I stand before thee, those who are watching on the social media platforms, this is what I want to encourage. Because I would never tell a person, follow me. Because I am nothing. I am nobody. Any man that thinketh himself to be something when he's nothing, he will deceive himself. There's no, we don't follow me, but if anything, follow me as I am in Christ. That means I fear Christ. Follow me. I love Jesus. Follow me. So that you can experience the same experience that I experienced in Christ Jesus. The peace that I have now that I don't got to duck and peek out the windows every five minutes because I'm high and I don't know when the police going to kick the door. Scared because the wolves might come get me and get the drop on me and rat me and tie me up for these couple dollars I got in my house. That peace that comes in Christ when you turn from your sins. And guess what? I don't got to worry about my mortgage because Jesus is the way. He going to make sure that mortgage get paid. I don't got to worry about some car notes. I don't got to worry about food. I don't got to worry about none of that. None of it. God going to make a way for me. And I believe that in faith, the faith that I have in Jesus Christ is the same faith I want for my brothers and sisters. Somebody's out there today, they don't know what they're going to do. They're suffering. They're battling. They don't know. Spiritually, they are congested. They're hurting. They've been hurt. They've been abused as children. I want you to know that Jesus, he can take that pain away and he can give you a fulfillment. Many of us can't get to Christ because we hurt. We got malice and bitterness in our hearts from the things that we've been through. Church hurt is real. People have been, they've been hurt in the churches. But in Christ, in Jesus, you have that victory. Hallelujah. Verse 7 says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye should ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Hallelujah. This is what I'm saying right now. That if we would be in Christ, that the things that we ask, God would do those things for us. Why you think that every time these people tell you it's getting better, God will bring another variant. Here come Omicron. Three months from now, it'll be something else. Why? Because we have not yet submitted unto Christ. We have not yet repented. The Bible don't change. It's the same thing from Second Chronicles as it is today. It don't change. If God told his people, if my people, which are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves, pray, seek my face, Turn from your wicked ways. It says, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive sin. Then will I heal the land. There will be no healing come upon this land until we submit. 
till we repent, till we turn from wickedness. Why the rest of the preachers ain't telling you this? They telling you get ready. God get ready to move. Yeah, he get ready to move you right into quarantine. Move you right into debt. Move you right off your job. Because some people don't want to, like, like, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm one of them. They will not vaccinate me with anything. Now, that's me. I'm not speaking against anybody else. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get the vaccinated. No, they will not put nothing in me nor none of mine. None of my kids, none of us. They will not. Because I have Jesus. And I believe that. I believe that. If you choose, hey, to each his own. I'm not knocking nobody. But I believe. But guess what? I also have enough faith to know that we are living in a time now where we're seeing where everything is going. Most people can't even work on their jobs without those vaccinations. How many people said they wasn't going to get a vaccination until your job said, either you get this shot or don't come back? How many of us got enough faith to know that God will provide for us if we stand on what we believe in faith in Christ? And if they told me, luckily, I ain't going to have to worry about that because I got my own business. God took care of me. Thank you, Jesus. So I ain't got to worry about a man telling me I can't come in and out of this place because mine is mine. But how about those that don't have their own businesses when that manager call you in there and say, listen, you got to get this vaccination. Because after you get the vaccination, then they're going to tell you, now you got to get this booster. After you get this booster, then they're going to say, now you got to pop these pills. After the pills, they'll come up with something else six months from now. You're going to have to take that too. And guess what? After you do all of that and you tell them everything that they wanted to hear and they see the paperwork saying you did it, then you're going to get sick and then you're going to still have to go home. Because God can't be stopped by man. This is the point that our Lord is trying to make. You can shoot yourself up with all you want, but if I say you getting it, you got it. You got it. Period. That is the sovereignty of God. That's why righteousness is the only thing that will save us from the wrath of God. And it's always been that way. When the Israelites were disobedient, what did he do? He, he put them in, he let them be captured by the enemies. He brought famine upon the earth. What happens? They cried out to God, Lord, forgive us. They repented. After that, God set them free. He brought water. We don't serve the same God. You think our God ain't looking at us to say, when will y'all get it? When y'all going to get it? Y'all are wicked people. Y'all refuse to repent. The problem is, that the gospel is not being preached to the point where people have understanding. People are just saying, wait on your next season. God is getting ready to bless you. He getting ready to give you an increase, and you ain't got to do nothing. All you got to do is wait, because that's how good our God is. You ain't got to live right. You ain't got to repent. You ain't got to turn from sin. You ain't got to do none of that. Just wait on God. He going to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's foolishness. We have a requirement. To consider ourselves to be disciples does not mean that we can just say that we believe. And this is what Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 16 and 24. He says, then Jesus, he says, then said Jesus unto his disciples, he says, if any man will come after me, he says, let him deny himself. Hallelujah. It says, let him deny himself. It says, and follow me. Follow me. And there's no way, shape, or form that you can follow Christ in sin. Because Jesus was the one man that walked this earth that did not indulge in sin. He was God on earth. No sin. You got to let it go. And most of us don't want to. Because we have become so content in what we do and how we do it. And nobody is requiring us to be accountable for the things that we do here on earth. 
There's no requirement. There's no teaching through the scripture. Nobody teaches. Hallelujah. First Peter one, chapter four. First Peter one. Verse 14. Hallelujah. And I'm going to finish this thing up. Actually, I'm going to start from the 13th verse. Wherefore, gird, gird up your loins of your mind. The Bible says be sober. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Bible goes on to say in verse 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance. But it says, but as he which have called you is holy. The Bible says, so be ye holy in all manners of conversation. It goes on to say, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. For I am holy. We must be holy. We must live righteously. We must live holy. We must. There's no compromising in that. Hallelujah. He says, and if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, this is what you got to receive. To speak that you believe is not enough. For the Father, he judges according to what? To every man's work. Right now, somebody's watching or somebody's listening. God has a work for you to do. There is something that God has ordained for your hands. But until you accept Christ into your life, until most people are walking around in circles right now, they have no idea what the purpose of their life is. They have no idea. Some of you watching right now have no idea. You're still trying to figure out why you're here. What's my purpose? You got babies. You got a job. You got a little money. You got a little boyfriend. You still feel empty. You still can't figure out why you don't have that joy that you really feel like you need to have. Because you don't have Christ. I had no idea what the purpose of my life was until I came to Christ. And it's the same thing I want for everyone else. It's the same thing I want for those that are sitting out here who may not have. If you don't have Christ, that's what I want for you. I want you to experience the goodness of the Lord. I want you to be blessed the way God blessed me. I want you to have peace the way I have peace. Where I'm not in love with the things of the world anymore, but I'm in love with Jesus. Now, when people hear holiness, the first thing they do is panic because they think they can't have no life. Listen, I'm extra happy. I have a lot of fun. Don't believe it. That is, that's the mindset that we have. We think we can't have no fun because why we have actually associated fun with sin. That's why we can't believe we can't do without sin. How can I have fun if I don't get drunk? <laughs> if I don't go to the bar and get lit, how do, how do we have fun? If we don't roll up and smoke and get high, how do I have fun? I can't curse. Without my bud, I don't have no swag. I thought that if I stop smoking weed, my whole swag going to be gone. I ain't never had no swag anyway. <laughs> I was fooling myself. I wasn't all swagged out. I mean, listen, walking around with your pants hanging off your butt don't make you cool. Following after some other dude because he got a little bit of money don't make you cool. You know what I'm saying? Half of these young boys, y'all think y'all cool until they put them cuffs on you, then you cold. When you in that cell, now you ain't cool no more. And all of a sudden, them, them lips start running. You a gangster in the club until the cops put them cuffs on you, then you talk about everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, def it's, it's a facade. Be not deceived by the enemy. The devil's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. It is to deceive us into believing everything that's no good for us is good for us. The point is the enemy wants us to do everything that is contrary to the gospel. Everything contrary to God. 
because he hates Jesus. So he does everything he can to make you do what God don't want you to do. That's the deception. It is deceit. It is deceit. Do it this way. Do it this way. So in my closing, I want to say this. There are many false prophets. Be careful where you worship. Be careful what churches you in. Be careful with what kind of doctrine you're receiving from people. Watch out. Jesus made it clear in Matthew 7. He made this clear. Many are going to come in my name. They're going to come performing miracles, casting out demons, all of these things in the name of Jesus. At the end of the day, depart from me, we workers of iniquity. Be not deceived. Everything that you see in these churches ain't God. Some of it is the devil. The enemy is capable. Let me break this down for you. Let's close with this. This is powerful because what people don't understand, the false prophets in the churches today are spreading the false doctrine all across the world. It's the preachers. It's not the people. It's the preachers that are spreading false doctrine all across the world. It is the false prophets that are spreading these doctrines all across the world. They are servants of Satan. They are not God's people. Let me share this with you. Not all miracles are of divine origin. Remember that. All miracles are not of divine origin. And that not all miracle workers are divinely accredited. Everybody that work of miracles is not of God. See, this is an understanding that I have to give to you. I want you to understand this. Because a miracle simply means that a supernatural power is at work. But what you have to understand, that power may be divine or satanic. The enemy has the ability to deceive. He has the power. There is power, satanic power. There's all types of witchcraft and all types of foolishness that's going on in the world. Many people are indulging in it, controlled by it, and under these spells, they don't even realize it. That's what witchcraft is. That's what it is. You're not supposed to realize it. Some of us may have been under cults. We didn't even know it. Why? Because we didn't study for ourselves. We didn't read for ourselves. That's why the Bible says study to show thyself approved. You got to read, study, fast, pray, seek God for yourselves. You don't just depend on a preacher. If you listen to everything the preacher tells you, you don't know where he'll take you. Hallelujah. It says Satan may empower his workers to cast out demons temporarily in order to create the illusion that mer the miracle is divine. Now, we know that the scripture, thank God for this, we got into this a little bit last night, we know that the scripture says that Satan can't cast out Satan. But what he can do is create a temporary delusion to make you believe that what you just seen happen was something divine of God, a miracle. Hallelujah. How many people are watching this stuff going on in the churches and they're saying, oh, our pastor got power. He cast out a demon and they pastor got demons in them. <laughs> All they did was to work together. Why? To make you run to everybody you know and tell them about that miracle that happened in the church. Why? So you can come on in and you can get you a demon. <laughs> this is real. This ain't play. What you think the false prophet is? He is a servant of Satan. His job is to deceive you so that they can bring you into a place where they can put these demons on you and you be so scared that you won't even leave the church because you're afraid that some man is going to pray against you or your family or your loved ones and they're going to go to God and say, God, get them, and then God going to get them because they said so. That witchcraft is real. You won't even leave the church because you're too scared. You ain't scared of God. You're scared of what man said God going to do to you. Are we serious? 
Have we taken the glory away from God to the point where we've given it to ourselves? Oh, they're going to come together. They're going to pray against me. Wow. This is real. This is real, man. This is why I preach it while I do. I preach it the way I do because I want people to know. Be be beware of the deception. But not only that, come to Christ for yourself. Don't depend on nobody to tell you what you need to do. It's right here in God's book. If you need help, that's what a pastor is for, to lead and guide you through the scripture. How to receive Christ. Today is taught, follow the preacher. Follow me. See, people took that same scripture, follow me as I am in Christ. They'll take that as to make people believe that you should follow after me. Because I'm a servant of Christ. Because I am the pastor. Because I have been called. Hallelujah. That's exactly what the Bible says, that we are to trust no man. Even myself as the pastor standing before you, don't, you don't take my word for nothing. If it ain't in that book, you don't receive it. You don't take my word for nothing. Guess what? I can't save you. I can't get you to heaven. I ain't got no power. And if I do lay hands, if somebody get healed, to the glory be to God. It has nothing to do with me. Don't ever affiliate me. That's to say, oh, Pastor Phillips got power. He laid hands. Oh, I will check you right then. No, to God be the glory. He has all the power. You know, power. If these brothers had power, they could go anywhere they want and lay hands like Jesus did and be healed. It'd be healing going on every day, but why ain't it? These false prophets laying hands on people. Come out of them, come out of them, come to them. They push you down. No power. No power. Jesus said, demon, come out. Guess what? The demon came out. Period. Period. You got people mushing you all the way to the ground, trying to prove they somebody. Be careful. Are these false prophets and prophetess? Nowhere in the Bible did it ever say that a prophetess laid hands on anybody. Where? Where that scripture at? You better be careful where you go to church. Don't you let no so-called prophetess lay hands on you. That's not her place. The Bible does not say that a prophetess lays hands, especially on any man. Because a woman is not to absorb authority in no way over the man. That's the Bible. That's the scripture. We don't want the word of God no more. That's why women lead the churches. There's no teaching. There's no teaching. To hold a position of a pastor, apostle, preacher, any kind of authority in the church that a woman holds is error against the Bible. That is error. Because a woman is not to exalt authority. A woman is not to teach over the men. But what happened is we took the gospel and said, we don't want that part of it no more. That's why women run churches. A woman has a place in the church. The Bible says she is to be the keeper of the home. But women don't want that. The Bible don't have nothing to do with a social movement for women to empower themselves to be validated to say that they're equal to men. The Bible is the Bible. We follow that. How can you be a keeper of the church when you don't even have authority in your own house? You are to follow your husband as he is fit in Christ. You don't lead nothing. You don't lead your house, and you definitely don't lead the church. The divine order is that it is what? It is man over woman. It is Christ over man. It is the father over Christ. That is the divine order. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. Read it for yourself. That's God's order. Why you think it's so much witchcraft? Why you think it's so much deception? Women, you have a place. Your place is powerful in the church. Your place is powerful in the church. It don't make you a preacher. 
it don't make you a leader over the church. There is no woman in the Bible ever that held that title. She has never been called to preach as a pastor, as an apostle. There is no scripture to back that up. And all you will ever get from any sister that's trying to go back and forth with you about that is theory. Well, in those times, this and that. And there's a God's word the same today, yesterday, and forever. It don't change. It don't change. This ain't about validation. This ain't about women. Listen, women, you are powerful. You are beautiful. You are special. You are everything. You just ain't the leader in God's house. Not because Pastor Phillips says so, because that's what the Bible says. We got to follow the word. It's the scripture. This ain't my theory. This ain't my ideology. This ain't my thought. This ain't me. I ain't Ike Turner. I ain't Ike Turner. Most people, I had a woman tell me one time because I gave her the scripture. She said, I'm intimidated by her. Okay. I got my wife what I'm intimidated for. Any woman that fear God, she is going to follow God's word because it's not about me. My wife is submissive unto her husband because the Bible says so. Not because I said so. I don't rule my house with an iron fist. I ain't slapping my wife around, choking her out every 10 minutes. Nah, she loved me because the love of God that's in her teaches her through the scripture to submit to her husband. And I honor and love her as the wife she's supposed to be because I know as a husband, I am to love my wife as Jesus loves the church. That's the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the Bible. I promise. It's the Bible. It's not my thoughts. That's why I'm bold enough to say, if you under a woman preacher in any church, get out. It's error. It's wrong. It's not of God. He did not commission her. He did not tell her. She might have told you the Holy Ghost told her she had a greater calling. Maybe she does, but not as a pastor, an apostle, a bishop, a preacher, a deacon. The Bible clearly says that those that want to hold these offices, first of all, they must be wives of one husband, husbands of one wife. The Bible has always been very specific. If that was the case, it would have said in order for you to hold this office, they must be. That's not what the Bible says. It doesn't say they. See, this is why you may not see the church packed out. Because women want to come into church and they want to think that they're going to dominate the church. That's not God's way. God's way is for everybody to be in their place and, and hold their own position. That way you will see the glory of God manifested because everything is in divine order. It's in order. It's in order. That's God's order. Who am I to change it? Who am I to go against God's will? Well, who am I to be, what kind of spirit do these men have? You got brothers sitting under women in the church. You got husbands sitting under their wives in the church. How does that feel natural? How is she in control of the church at church, but at home you're supposed to be ahead? How is that possible? Is that possible? Yeah, at home, I'm the man, but at church, she the man. <laughs> what? Come on, man. This is the truth. This is what I'm up against. That's why I know the time is going to come. When people are going to call me to certain platforms, I already know what God got planned for me. If you call me into your church to preach something, the first, the first error I see, that's what I'm preaching. That's why I'm going to take the brothers with me because I know they may try to escort me out and all. Don't be deceived in no way. Peter carried the sword. Peter carried the sword. Be not deceived. I'm a man of God, but Peter carried that sword. I'm not stupid either. But I ain't afraid of nothing but God. So when I go into your church, if I see error, I'm preaching error. That's why I would never go to a gathering where they tell me I have a specific, this is what everybody's preaching. You got to preach this too. I'm good. I don't preach nothing nobody tell me to preach. I'm only going to preach what God tell me to preach. That's it. So I can't be part of that. So why I'm not here to alienate the church 
for myself, I'm here to say that anything that I involve myself in must be the truth of the gospel. Yeah. It has to be the truth. It has to be the truth. And I'm going to always speak the truth. Yeah. Always tell the truth. Because guess what submissiveness is to God? When you give the scripture to a woman who's standing in a position as a preacher, and you say, listen, sis, this is the gospel. These are the scriptures. The submissiveness comes from her when she says, thank you, pastor, because I did not know. No one never taught me the truth. I just thought my mother was a preacher. My grandmother was a preacher. This is real. Some people grown up like that. Most sisters don't know the truth. They just operating and doing what they know. But then there are women that when you show them the scripture, they will prove to you that this ain't about God. This is about them. It's not about God. Ten years I've been, not ten years, I'd say about seven years now, I've been preaching the same doctrine. To this day, I have not had a woman come to me and be able to correct me through the scripture pertaining to women preachers. Because it does not exist. You can't just create scripture. It's not there. There's nothing to combat it. Some of them will say, oh, well, Deborah, she was a judge. Yeah, she was not a preacher. She was not a preacher. She was a prophetess. Some of us say, oh, well, what about Apollos when Aquila and Priscilla? Yeah, but guess what? Priscilla was with what? Aquila, her husband. Why would we think for any minute that uh, Priscilla thought that she had a position of authority when her and Paul, who wrote these books, 1 Corinthians, pertaining to the order, they all work together as tent builders together. Do you think that Priscilla had a position of power when they built the church in Corinth? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She knew. She knew. She, hallelujah. She knew. She knew. Mary carried the first message. Guess what? My wife carried a message last week. That don't make her a preacher. That don't make Jessica a preacher because I gave her a message to carry. That don't make her a preacher. That don't give her a position of authority in the church. Because I'm talking about in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ. Never forget this in my closing that Paul received nothing but revelation straight from God. Nothing Paul was taught came from man. He clarifies that in Galatians chapter 1. He received nothing from man. It was all through divine revelation from God himself. And, of course, the gospel in which he received from God lined up with the other 11. It all lined up. So while most women, I've had a sister tell me before that Paul was a womanizer. Some even say he was gay. I heard a woman say that Paul was gay. That he was a homosexual. You know what that's called? Theory. No evidence in the Bible that would ever to say that Paul was gay. <laughs> no scripture to back that up. <laughs> Theory. Theology. Proves nothing. Most women will tell you today, well, what does this matter as long as God get, will get done? No, as long as God's will gets done according to his way. You can't just change God's way and do it your way and say, well, God will be cool. He'll be cool with it if I do it this way. No, he won't. That's why he gave us order. This is teaching that has to be done. Because I want people to know, many of y'all, there's some people that might see this, you might be sitting under a woman. Guess what? That don't mean you got to hate that sister. But guess what? Go to her and tell her that you heard something that I said and you want to know the truth and see what she tell you. See if she give you any scripture to solidify her position in the church. That's it. Don't raise up against your leader. If you got a leader, you should be able to go to her these days or him and say, hey, I heard this. Show me in the Bible where that's, a, where that's at. See what, they, see what she tells you. See if she can open that Bible up and give you the scripture and say, look, the Bible says right here that not only men but women have been called to carry the word of God and that Jesus will call women to ministry. Let her show you. <coughs> if she show you, please contact me. all these years I've missed it 
all these years I missed her. So she can show you in the Bible where God has solidified her in ministry through the scripture. Please contact Pastor Phyllis. I am here every Sunday at 1.30. Please. Please. Until then, women, come out of them pulpits. That's not your place. It's not your place. And somebody got to say it. Women, that's not your place. That's not your place. Once again, I will say this because this is what's real. The gospel is not about a woman's movement to be validated as equals to men. That's not what the gospel is about. It's not. This is not about validation for you, sisters. Because ultimately, you will find out if you come into a place like this, that you have such a great purpose in the actual body of Christ. That does not mean you get to stand in my place. Because that's not what God has ordained for the woman in the church. It's not. It's not your place. If it ain't righteous, it ain't right. And if it ain't God's way, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. And men have become these pudding pop, sweet rolls, pudding pops. Because you're so scared that when you go home, that them sheets going to be cold. That that stove going to be cold. But before I submit to my wife, I order out. (laughs) And because of the peace of the Lord that my sheets might be a little chilly, I'll just get a blanket. (laughs) Hallelujah. And no, I will not run to another woman to cook for me. And no, I will not run to another woman to keep me warm. Because the Holy Spirit in me say, no. No. I love my wife with all of me. And I thank God for a woman of God that does not fear me, but she fears God. That's why she's obedient to the word of God. That's why she honors me. That's why she understands that I have a place and she has a place. Because she fears God. She fears the word of God. She understands that she must stand before God and give an account for everything she said and did. And that her husband can't save her from nothing. So remember, if it ain't righteous, it ain't right. If it's not of God, it's error. Get away from it. Come out from it. Nothing will save us from the wrath of God unless we turn to Christ. God bless y'all and may heaven smile upon you.